How's it going everybody? Your old pal Baba Ganesh here once again coming to you with another fantastic video. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great one. So today we're here to discuss the debate of the century. Trail runners versus hiking boots. Let's go ahead and get started. So okay everybody, like I said, today we're here to discuss the difference between trail runners and hiking boots, why you would choose one over the other, the differences between the both, um, and really what they're intended to do for you. Now, when it comes to choosing a hiking shoe, this is a very, very subjective thing. I still recommend to go out and really try on a whole bunch of shoes uh, to really kind of determine what suits you the best. However, some basic principles will still remain, um, and at least this is a great way to help you determine which way to go, uh, which direction to go in as far as, you know, which styles that you want to try on. So, okay, everybody, let's get into the discussion here today, the difference between trail runners versus hiking boots and what they are going to do for you. So when it comes to trail runners or low cut hiking shoes, uh, the first pro, of course, is going to be that they are substantially lighter weight. Being lighter weight, the big benefit of that is, especially for people trying to do longer distances, you're just going to have a lot less weight on your feet overall. So especially longer days, your legs aren't going to tire out as, as quickly. You're going to have more efficiency out of yourself and you're able to be a little bit lighter on your feet, a little bit quicker on the move. Second on that list of pros there for you, of course, they are going to be very breathable, which means they're also going to be moisture wicking and uh, very fast drying. Uh, so the benefit of that especially is if you also do get into pouring rain or for those of you through hiking, you know, getting into multiple days of rain, at least your shoes do have a chance of kind of drying out or at least draining out and getting some airflow through there. I can't tell you how many times along my 2018 Appalachian Trail through hike where we just had multiple days of rain, even multiple weeks of rain. And yeah, the shoes were still kind of damp in the morning, but at least getting that airflow through there, taking the insoles out, letting just the air get to everything early in the morning, putting them back on. Yes, again, they were still damp, but they dried out very quickly. They warmed up with my warm feet getting into them very quickly as well. Uh, so breathability, quick drying nature, another great benefit to trail runners. And lastly, another great benefit to trail runners or low cut hiking shoes is the minimal break in process uh, that it takes to get these really going and mold to your feet. Uh, certainly break in process is, is always uh, kind of difficult, always kind of strenuous to deal with because all you want to do is lace these things up and go hiking with your brand new hiking shoes. Um, so getting trail runners, getting low cut hiking shoes does decrease that break in process. So you're able to tie these up do some light hikes to at least get that break in started very quickly, but you're gonna notice it's only gonna take you a couple days of hiking um, or even just a single day of hiking to really start to get that flex, get that pivot line in it and everything as well, and just make these eventually become a part of you. Now, certainly with any hiking shoe, there's always going to be cons when it comes to that. Uh, again, choosing a proper hiking shoe is very subjective, but here's a couple cons that I came up with when it comes to trail runners. Now, number one, of course, the most obvious thing right off the bat is very little ankle support. Trail runners are intended to be more flexible. They're intended to allow for proper pivot of your ankle. So especially just hitting the ground in awkward situations, it can just naturally kind of roll into position and absorb that impact in a way. Um, so minimal ankle support. I know some people out there, they're very keen on having proper ankle support. So that is going to be a sacrifice you're going to make for being more flexible, lighter weight, and more breathable on your feet. Second one that we got here for you, trail runners are usually, usually uh, non-waterproof. There are exceptions. I have seen plenty of Gore-Tex trail runners out there, but typically uh, trail runners are going to be non-waterproof. Now, certainly what that means is the second you step into a puddle, the minute it starts raining, you know, these things are going to absorb water. They're going to let water in. Um, so that is something, if you're someone who doesn't like to get wet feet uh, when you go hiking and you're just a section hiker, you know, certainly uh, going with something non-waterproof night, but might not be necessarily for you. But for you long distance hikers, for you through hikers out there, going with something non-waterproof for allow allowing that drainage and allowing that breathability, might be more important for you. 
So it comes down to what your personal preference is, but certainly take in mind that most trail runners, again, I say most of them are non-waterproof. And lastly on there for the list of cons for trail runners is just a lower range of durability. Now I'm holding here the Ultra Lone Peak 4s. As you can see, the toe guard is already starting to peel. Uh, the tread on here only has about a 500 mile tread limit on here as well. Um, so because it's just a lighter weight material intended for that flexibility, um, you know, certainly durability is going to be a sacrifice you're going to have to make. No worries, 500 mile tread limit is still great on here. Certainly you can push well past 500 miles. I did plenty of times on my AT through hike. Uh, however, you know, certainly durability. If, if you want a boot or a shoe that's going to last you a number of years, you know, certainly trail runners might not be the best way to go. Uh, but if you're looking for high end performance with being lightweight on your feet, as I said before, you know, trail runners could be a great option for you. So let's go ahead and let's start talking about some hiking boots and why you would choose boots over trail runners. Let's go ahead and get started. So, okay, I got some of my hiking boots here there for you. Uh, these are the Ultra Lone Peak 4 RSMs, the mid waterproofs. Uh, clearly I like Ultras, especially the Lone Peaks. Um, but that being said, they are still a hiking boot, a mid-cut hiking boot, and so let's go ahead and talk about that. So certainly pros of hiking boots in general. The number one thing about hiking boots is they are intended to be durable. These are going to have a much higher grade of durability, usually a longer tread limit on there. Uh, the material itself of the shell is going to have a higher grade of durability. There are always some exceptions out there, uh, but yeah, it's usually the construction that you're going to see in hiking boots. So especially if someone's looking for that really long-term boot, something to last a number of years, uh, where they can hike 1,000, 1,500 miles on there, and then years down the road even just get the soles replaced, you know, hiking boots might be a great way to go for that. Uh, with that added durability, taking it up on, you know, heavy duty rocks, um, you know, lots of desert situations where there's lots of sand, lots of debris to really scrape away at the shell of the dirt, of the uh, boot there, you know, boots are going to be a little bit more of a suitable option there for you. Uh, so hiking boots, certainly added durability if that's something that is important for you. And of course, the other most obvious thing is going to be the much more added ankle support that this gives to you. Certainly if, if you're someone who just doesn't have strong ankles or they're just, they just feel more comfortable wearing a mid cut boot for that added ankle support, hey, boots are going to be a great option there for you. Obviously, ankle support is great if you're someone who is susceptible to ankle rolls or, hey, if you just have in the back of your mind that the last thing you want is to roll your ankle, snap your ankle, uh, and, and hope that someone finds your body soon enough, uh, boots could be a great option there for you. Nothing is guaranteed, of course, but at least that added side-to-side -side protection for the ankle movement certainly does go a long way. Certainly, it is beneficial towards a lot of people. And of course, the third pro when it comes to that is most hiking boots that you're going to find are going to be waterproof. Uh, there are some exceptions to that, of course, as I said before, uh, but the majority of hiking boots are now going to transition into being that waterproof. Um, especially it gives you the low cut ankle, going to a waterproof option is very beneficial. Um, so with waterproof, certainly, hey, it's going to keep the rain out. Even if it's just been a few days of rain you're, and then all of a sudden you get a nice day, you're out for a hike, at least you know sloshing around in the mud, the puddles, that your feet are going to stay nice and dry for you. Me personally, I like them uh, for my winter backpacking trips, hiking through snow and ice, doing all that kind of stuff. It's nice to know at least that my feet are going to stay dry hiking through all the snow uh, and all the ice and everything. Okay, and certainly, like with any hiking shoe out there, there are going to be some negatives to go along with it as well. I uh, shouldn't say negatives, I should just say things to know about which might dissuade you from buying the boot. Uh, but anyway, uh, certainly when it comes to hiking boots, the number one thing I'm going to talk about, uh, obviously, is going to be the added weight that you're going to have on your feet. Uh, if you're someone who likes to hike light and fast, um, you know, an ultralight hiker, uh, you know, going with a heavy boot might not make a whole lot of sense, especially for a lot of long distance hikers where you like to do 20 plus, you know, 30 plus miles. If you're wearing heavy, heavy boots on your feet, obviously you're going to be dragging your legs a little bit more throughout the day. Uh, there's always exceptions to that case. Sometimes you get Hulk Hogan out there hiking through the woods and it doesn't matter what he's wearing. Uh, but 
for some people who like to just be light and fast, don't like to wear a lot of bulkiness on their feet, you know, boots are going to be much heavier, a little bit bulkier. To go along with that, uh, with boots, certainly there is going to be a slightly longer break-in process. Because of the added durability, the added protection of the shell that most boots give to you, you know, there is more time um, or more timers required to really get that flex, get that built-in pivot going in there. Um, so you are going to have to spend, you know, an extra a week and a half, upwards of three weeks, really breaking in a good pair of boots. Again, this is intended to be a long-term solution for you, which means it's going to take a little bit longer to break in, especially your heavy-duty leather boots that are out there. But once you do break them in, uh, that leather and air, the leather boots in particular just molds your feet. They are intended to be a long, long-term boot. So be patient with it, break it in, um, and they'll be good to go. But again, it's just a longer, longer break-in process. So if you're scheduling a last-minute trip, you realize that you need to get some hiking boots, get in there sooner rather than later so you can get these things broken in. And lastly on there, you know, again, because I said a lot of hiking boots uh, are waterproof, during hot summer months, these things are going to get hot. Your feet are going to sweat. Yeah, one thing with waterproof boots, if water is if it's intended to keep water out, it's also going to keep water in. So if your feet are sweating, uh, you're just gonna basically be swimming inside there, which is why I personally don't wear waterproof boots uh, during the spring and summer months while it's warm. Um, so taking consideration that if it's meant to keep water out, it's also going to keep water in. So those hot summer months, if you're wearing nice, big, heavy duty leather boots with full water protection, full Gore-Tex and everything, you might be sweating your feet off a little bit. You know, uh, basically uh, sweating your feet off, softening your skin, that's going to lead to blisters, could lead to other problems, uh, in which case could get you off trail. So keep that in mind. If you want to stick with waterproof boots, nothing wrong with that during the summer months whatsoever. Just make sure that when you do take uh, some breaks, uh, that you do take your shoes and socks off. Let your feet dry out. Let the air get inside the shoes and make sure that you get plenty of air inside these while you're at camp as well. Now, when it comes to my own footwear selection, my go-to is going to be the Trail Runner. Yes, I do carry still waterproof boots there with me. And like I said before, I keep those primarily just for my winter backpacking trips, uh, just to give me the added protection against the snow, the ice. Uh, I'm not through hiking anymore, so I don't need to worry about you know getting trench foot and really keeping all that moisture in there. Um, if I'm only out for a few days, I can take care of that kind of stuff. But I still have waterproof hiking boots for my winter trips to keep in that warmth inside there, keep the ice and the water out in the snow, and that's what I have those for. But otherwise, pretty much eight months, eight, nine months out of the rest of the year, I'm wearing trail runners the entire time. Now, I went through four pairs of the Lone Peak 3.5s on my AT through hike. I, wear, I wore trail runners the entire time from Georgia to Maine, all 2,190 miles. And my mindset behind that was I wanted to be light and fast on my feet when I had to get new shoes, that minimal break-in process, so I could lace them up and literally start hiking and I had no problems whatsoever. Um, and again, because of that breathability, yes, that meant I was hiking through snow and water and rivers and my feet were getting soaking wet, my feet got cold, but because of that breathability, I was able to take the insoles out at night, let them sit there, let them kind of dry out a little bit, even if they were damp in the next morning, just from me hiking for a few hours, if it was nice that day, they would dry out very, very quickly. So having that added breathability was more important for me than having the waterproof capabilities. Um, you know, the last thing you want is especially sitting in smoggy, you know, dirty water that's been in, inside your boot for a few days now. <clears throat> um, that's gonna lead to trench foot, lead to blisters. You're gonna have some major, major issues and you're gonna get off the trail. Um, it's gonna take you a whole lot longer to get to, uh, get to Maine, that's for sure. So trail runners are my go-to shoe. The Lone Peak 4, this is right here. Uh, I'll have to do a separate review on these shoes there for you. Uh, but yeah, boots versus trail runners, my go-to are going to be the trail runners. Okay, everybody, so those are some differences between hiking boots and trail runners. Some pros and cons uh, to at least give you some information to help you make up your own decision there. Again, go in, try some boots on. Uh, I know REI has a fantastic return policy, so definitely try out some boots when it, all this craziness ends anyway. 
uh, you know, go try on some boots, see how they feel, uh, really set yourself up for success there. But I hope this at least provides you with some good information. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Give me a thumbs up if you did like it. Otherwise, subscribe down below to keep up to date with all my future videos. I hope you're all staying safe out there during these crazy times. Uh, do what you can to keep yourself busy. I know it's not easy. I'll keep doing what I can to uh, put these videos out uh, to help preoccupy your time a little bit. Thank you all so much. Catch you on the next video. Baba Ganoush, out.